whole time, the whole thing was shadowing us, right behind us, right on the side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, that this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can Squatch D TV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls. And from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's dates, October 4th, 2020. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with my co-host, the man downstairs, Mr. Steve. Chris Bannon. Hello. And, uh... So, uh, and of course, we have one of our, our favorite guests here tonight to join us live is, uh, Chris, can you pass on the point? There we are. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Stewart, no better known as the Crypto Hulk. And good evening to you, sir. Oh, there we go. Good evening. So let's, uh, let's do our roll call for the folks that have rolled in for the show. Hello All to right. Alan. Hello, Alan. Alan. Pat, good to see you, brother. Of course, what night would be complete without the meatloaf? Mr. Mick is on. Oh, hey, Mick. <laughs> meatloaf. <laughs> Kerry, good afternoon. James, hey, good Kerry. to see We got James. Hello, James. Welcome. James. Oh, there he is. Wife's orders. Me. <laughs> we, got, we got Sean Forker. Sean. Hey, Sean. Sean, brother. Hey. And we got Mike Stetton. Of course, Mike. Mr. Celtic. Celtic. Alan again. And, of hey, course, Keith has popped on as well, our good Keith friend Whirly. Keith Whirly. Hey. Yay. So here we are tonight, folks. we got a lot to cover tonight. And, uh, boy, we're going to have some fun tonight as well. We always have fun on our shows. And uh, I, I don't know if I, you missed it earlier, Jeff, when I was talking with Chris off, you know, before we went on the air. <clears throat> but I uh, I was on the 40 and slip tonight. And, uh-oh. Tack. And there's Tack. Hopefully he's feeling much better. John, good to see you, brother. John. So the regulars have filtered in. We'll Welcome. see who else, show, we'll say, who else shows, shows up. And, folks, for those on YouTube, make sure you give this show a, a thumbs up, please, if you like what you're hearing. And, uh, oh, and here's uh, Steve Stryford. Good to see you, Stephen. Bigfoot books. Hey. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, 
Um, so I, I figured out that um, that uh, I can t- I, I I can imitate Alex Jones. <laughs> so oh my god! <laughs> all, all of a sudden, we all started talking. All of a sudden, I'm like, "Yeah, okay, uh, how you doing, everybody? Uh, yeah, this is Alex Jones, and uh, we are uh, oh the Bilderbergs. Uh, they're coming over the wall now, and uh, so yeah, I, I figured out I, I actually sound like." <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 really close. It really is, yeah. Well, you know, uh, they they took me off of YouTube, and uh, but that's okay because you can find me over on the website, and uh, yeah, I can go on all night. So, uh, <laughs> so some voices I can do pretty adeptly. Um, I I used to do Reagan, and uh, <clears throat> I'll see if I can pull a Reagan off. I haven't done that in years. Well, last night me and Nancy. Oops, uh, wrong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, you got the well down pat for sure, Hi, right, Cherry? Yep. Well, um, but uh, the the other one. Uh, uh, let me be perfectly clear. Uh, that was that was my Obama. Uh, I just anyway. Uh, let, let's let's get on with, with, with business of the night. <clears throat> so first, we'll, we'll we'll do a little bit of news uh, in case. And I want to thank Carl Schuker over on Facebook for uh, putting this to my attention. But apparently, there is a um, another uh, alleged um, sonar sighting with uh, Nessie in Loch Ness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Supposedly, it was... uh, So, uh, it says... uh, uh, now, 21st century image, uh, century sonar imaging would appear to have achieved what others have previously failed to do, <clears throat> and recorded the most compelling and startling evidence yet of the existence of the Loch Ness monster. Mind you, this is in one of the Scotland newspapers. Um, the find has left experts astounded by the clarity and size of the object, which was spotted last Wednesday, lurking nearly 600 feet below the surface of the loch, the second deepest in the UK. Images of a, of a, a crescent-shaped mass estimated at 33 feet long, were captured by a tourist cruise boat <clears throat> carrying 12 passengers on the final trip of, a, of the day around 4.30 p.m. Skipper Ronald McDonald Fort... I'm sorry, Skipper Ronald McKenzie. <laughs> uh, 49... <clears throat> Uh, I'm thinking of a. I'm thinking of uh, you know a burger. Uh, hey, after the show, Steve, you can get a Big Mac later. That's man. right. <laughs> uh, well, we. Where were we? And where were we? I lost it too. <laughs> so I'm Skipper, reading Ronald, along and I lost. Skipper <laughs> Ronald McKenzie, 49, of Cruise Loch Ness, who has worked on the lock for more than 30 years, said, "I've always got my eyes glued to the screen, but I've never seen anything like this." We had a strong contact, and it was right smack bang in the middle of the lock, about 170 meters, which is 558 feet for us people over here in North in uh, the United States. Um, ironically, some of the tourists on board, the two-year-old catamaran, missed the sighting as they were watching a sea eagle pass close by at the time. We, Mackenzie added, "We were halfway point of our uh, uh, Inver Morriston, uh, off Inver Morriston, where we turned around. The water is." 620 feet deep there. <clears throat> That's when I saw the sonar, uh, sonar something more eye-catching than a sea eagle. Because the boat was doing 10.7 knots, it was unable to detect if the object was moving or stationary, but it was big, at least 10 meters, mm. which is uh, 33 feet. This is the best sighting ever of Nessie. The contact lasted 10 seconds while we passed over it. We've had contacts in the past, but nothing like this. We have state-of-the-art sonar on the new boat. It doesn't lie. It can't lie. It captures what's there. Wow. All the dots near the surface are shoals and of Arctic char, and deeper down there are Ferox trout, mm. so it gives you a good idea of the size uh, of this large crescent shape. I believe there's something in the lock, and nobody knows what it is, and we should leave it alone. I've always thought there was something there, be it a big eel or a sturgeon or a big fish of some sort, mm. or even Nessie. It's blown me away. I've been looking at at it all night and all morning. I'm no sonar expert, but this is baffling. Hmm. So, but it also says the legend of the monster is said to be worth 41 million pounds, which roughly is about 82 million dollars into the region of tourism income. Oh, wow. It has led to a string of films, including the 1996 hit Loch Ness, starring Ted Danson and Jolie Richardson. So, 
So Very we nice. we have a new sonar hit with new equipment, 500 and what was it, 87 or 558 feet down, 33 feet long. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, let's... Uh, a few more. Uh, so I got that little news article. It's very interesting. We'll see what happens with it. Um, that, yeah, I thought yeah. the the deal with uh, Nessie was over. Sorry, I, yeah. I thought that was that was it. But yeah. hey, whether whatever it is, okay, that that they got on sonar, it's bound to be. Uh, you know, it don't have to be a plesiosaur or something, but it's something over thirty feet long, dude. That's a monster. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, it's a monster. So, yep. So let's say hi to a few of other folks in here too as well. Sherry's in the house. Hello, Sherry. Sherry. Uh, Sarah. Good evening, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. John. John, welcome. John Bush. Brian Impey is also in the house. Hey, Brian. Brian. So. <clears throat> so yeah. So I, I found that kind of cool. A little something uplifting for the day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Let's get on, before we get into our topic tonight, which is when networks go wrong with Bigfoot, <laughs> and uh, Jeff suggested that perhaps it was an easier, and you know, a shorter, su but you see, we want length in our subjects. <laughs> if, 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 we wanted, if we wanted a short subject, we would go when they go right with Bigfoot, but... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a real short subject there. <laughs> <mm. laughs> um, also, Colonel Chubbs is in the house. Colonel Chubbs. Welcome. So, okay. so anyway, uh, I want to respond to something. Uh, 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 people who know Michael Merchant, he has a channel, Snowwalker Prime, here on YouTube, mm -hmm. had made some comments. Uh, I, I don't know exactly when they were. Um, hello, Ashley. And Ashley. Uh, he made some comments about us, you know, kind of beating around the bush when it came to Russell Accord. So, you know... Uh, I didn't get back to him in time. I said, we've covered that in a couple of episodes. Yeah. And, I, and I remember we talked about it, I think, in episode, I think, 10, uh, saying, you know, we made mention of Expedition Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, we talked about, you know, well, you know, we'll have to give it a try, see what everybody thinks, yada, yada, yeah. yada. Yeah. But then on episode 15, we made this uh here's a screen cap of the show of right. us talking about the alleged you know tracks along their little walk and it's supposed to be six mile walk from base camp right, by the tracks and, right? so we we said okay yeah we'll, we'll keep we'll keep on the the prowl for it but then in episode 15 thanks to some internet sleuths who had come down we, we covered this quite extensively yep. as you'll see we talked about uh them being at antoine ranch Mm -hmm. And we talked for for quite a bit. We included right. a lot of stuff that, you know, like overhead shots and, you know, some of the stuff we found on the Internet. Yeah. And, you know, including some mapping that I had done. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see where we <clears throat> were not necessarily um, skating around it at all. No. And more to the fact, and I'll pop, pop this up, that uh, on... As you see, on February 13th, which uh, episode uh, 15 aired, I believe, on, or 21 aired, I believe, on February 26th. So I gave these folks a couple of weeks to respond, so you see the length yeah. that we're actually yeah. looking at. I actually sent a letter to the ranch, yeah, you know, asking if they could confirm some stuff for us. Or, you know, uh, and one of my questions is, I was wondering if you can confirm if Expedition Bigfoot Rail Splitter Media, which is the production company, actually right. stayed at the resort last year when filming. If so, for how long have there been Sasquatch sightings on or near the ranch? Because that right. would be pertinent to why they would be there. Right. Look forward to your response. Of course, I never did get any kind of response from it. And I did, at some point, I believe I sent him a second one along, but I figured I'd send you the initial... Uh, pop when we started you know doing this so to me i just feel that somebody's mistaken about saying we we beat around the bush um yeah if they were wondering and i'm glad to have jeff on here because i myself have done tv jeff has done a lot of tv and you know when when i talked to you know i talked to jeff and i've talked to russell yeah uh, you know off there where he can, uh, you know, in private conversations, we can say things uh, that aren't meant for public consumption because 
Russell and in some cases even Jeff are under NDAs not to talk about certain things. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you yeah. find yourself in, in a in a jam. And Russell had been under a um, Russell had been under an NDA. Uh, not to mention the fact that they were trying to renegotiate or try to you know lobby for a season two, which still hasn't been announced. So that's probably not a good sign. Um, we'll see, you know, uh, after the first year, if they pick it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, people don't realize that when you don't just show up, do a show and you're, you're the star, you're in charge, you know, you're not, you, if you want to do a show or if they approach you, you know, you have a contract that you have to sign. And in that contract, it states very plainly and clearly who is in charge and has the control over and over content and all of those things and that you if you open your mouth and say specific certain things you can be sued you can i mean you can get in you can get in some trouble financially if you open your mouth right <laughs> bill brock's bill. in the house and he says i'm the star <laughs> and he would bill, know bill. too he, he would know too um, and again, it changes a little bit if you get like a, a an executive producer role or something like that. It can change over time. <clears throat> but I've never never seen a season one show where you know a talent like on one of these shows uh, <laughs> um, where you're a talent on the show where you have the power to do what you want because you yeah. don't. You really don't. You may be able to guide, direct. Um, and do stuff, but you uh, you don't have that that power at all. And if you're under an NDA, obviously, I, I remember I got my uh, I got my hand slapped a little bit because I mentioned that you know I had done the Loch Ness program uh, in one of my blogs before, you know, trying to generate a local interest in it, you yeah. know, uh, prior to the release of the film. And they told me, said, "Can you please take that down?" Now we really, you know. So basically, I, you know, I was like, okay, I got to take it down. Oops. Like, Oops. They, they didn't want any advertising other than what they do. So, okay, whatever. And that was just a documentary. Oh. And, and, and luckily, I, I've been blessed. Oops. I've been blessed with, um, with doing programs that I have some semblance. And Jeff, Jeff, we were talking about that, too, is that sometimes they'll want you to say something that isn't correct. And I was always quick. I was always quick to say, I, I can't say it because it's not correct. Well, no. then, then they turn around. Well, can you say something similar that would make it correct? In that case, I could say, yeah, sure. But sometimes you don't always have that break, you know? Yeah. I know one particular instance, uh, I was filming a very, very popular show. Uh, and, you know, we're filming. I can't mention the name of it. I don't want to get in trouble there, but we're filming and I've literally got a cameraman, a director that's standing over the shoulder of the cameraman, a sound guy with a boom mic sticking over top of both of them. Then behind them, I had two PAs. One of them was carrying batteries for the sound equipment and the cameras and stuff. And the other one had a, a little backpack with water and snacks and things in it. So there were literally like six people. And, you know, I'm supposed to be going out through there, and the, the director says, look into the distance and, and act like you hear a, a noise. And I said, no. And he's, no. why? And I said, because I don't hear a noise. Right, but we're going to edit that in. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And ensued uh, about a 30-minute long argument with the director <laughs> of this uh, uh, show because I told him I would not pretend to hear things that weren't there, and I would not pretend to find evidence that wasn't there. Right. right. And yes, Alan, a PA is production assistant, correct? Not not physician's assistant, like in the, in the real world, but in the movie world, PA is a production assistant. Um, Basically, PA is somebody that, that goes and gets your coffee and does everything that, Nobody else wants to do. They are they are really great people. <laughs> yeah. And, and in fairness to Bill Brock too, uh, you know I, I haven't seen too much criticism of anything he's done. Uh, so that, that 
you know, uh, so that that's a, that's a plus. And and the same with with some of the programs I've been on. And, and uh, Jeff, I I haven't heard you come under fire for anything you've done, uh, because we're we're that we're those type of personalities where you know we try to avoid where you know it gets kind of a, in, in a muddled area. And I've been blessed. I haven't been in a, you know nobody's ever asked me to do anything like that. Um, did we do some recreations of scenes? Yes. There's a couple of scenes where they wanted me running a little bit, and, and that was just a recreation of something that actually happened. Yeah. And uh, that was just to get my feet running. <laughs> and yeah. that's what they did. Um, then there was another one where we had this yeah. audio exchange where uh, they took my live video and they had a couple of the other guys on the expedition recreate what they had said. And luckily, we were keeping... Um, uh, we would yeah. we would be keeping and and uh, thank you Jim Jernigan. We wouldn't be friends if you were a BS guy. <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. <laughs> um, so you know, it, it, to me it was okay. This is uh, fair. This is a, a fair fair thing. It's not like we're putting anything on. We're not adding anything to it. This is how it rolled out. Um, and they didn't even uh, they didn't even pipe in a phony noise. Um, and Mr. Celtic asks, by a second season, uh, and you realize hoaxing is taking place, can't you remove yourself from a series? All depends on the contract. Mm, yeah. It, de it depends on your contract. You can have an out, you can have a exit clause. Um, you know, and granted, I am not a talent attorney. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are a number of things. And yes, yours truly actually well, did get a contract once. Uh, from a UK company to do a show uh, on uh, Lake Cryptids, of all things. Yes, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> oh, I was just saying, uh, uh, that was the nasty one. <laughs> uh, everything comes around. Yeah. Um, and uh, I didn't sign it because there were some restrictions on, you know, I can't have a website, I can't have a blog, I can't have anything. And it wasn't specific to a cryptid. Mm. It was, you know, it, it was just general broad based. And mm. I said, well, we got, we definitely have to discuss this. And that yeah. was really the last time I heard that from them, which was fine. I'm, I'm not going to, um, uh, I'm not going to, uh, um, um, you know, say I'm not, not going to have a blog. Right. And Mr. Bachochin, late to the party, but well, we welcome. <laughs> welcome, Jay. Yeah, and I think it would a lot of it would depend on the the type of show you're doing too. Because right. if they if they got in the contract for entertainment, and they're like you know making up stuff that has nothing to do with you, I mean you really you can't get out of it. You're still going to be part of it because it's for entertainment. Well, you got to understand anything that goes on television is for entertainment. Yeah, it doesn't matter if Nat Geo is doing it, the Science Channel is doing it. You know, yeah. uh, I I just watched uh, Les Stroud's. No, not the Bigfoot stuff. Uh, I watched Les Stroud's uh, uh, The Grizzly uh, Corridor, or whatever. It was about Alaska and him. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure all the stuff in it w was as it happened. Yeah. Um, you know, but at least it's, le you know, some legit stuff going on there. It's nothing like, yeah. like wild or faked or anything like that. And at the time, it has, it, it's I, interesting to watch. I'll yeah. tell you this about Les. Uh, I worked a lot with Les. Um, have uh, oh gosh, we did the the Survivor Man Bigfoot, but then I did several episodes of his personal show that airs only on his network in Canada, the Survivor Man Network, and he was probably the most genuine person that I ever worked with as far as content, you know, his control of the content of everything. Um, Things just kind of happened. We didn't, we didn't like walk off into the distance and walk this way slowly. Kind of, you know, look off, look longingly into the distance. None of that happened. It was like, oh, good, we got a good shot of walking up that dirt road or something like that. But, but just about everything Les did was genuine. It was yeah. not staged. Um, He's a great guy. We stay in, in contact. He doesn't do social media a lot. He, he does more now than he used to, but uh, most everything is e by email. We email each other and things like that, and, and man, he's... 
I really wish he would do another uh, uh, Survivor Man Bigfoot show because it, I, I really enjoyed doing it. S- Sam's the other Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you I, know, thought, I thought Les's you know show was some, some of the more enjoyable ones because he talked about his experiences and stuff and why he's out there, you know, he's looking for an answer for himself. Well, you know, here's here's the thing. Um, you know, I, I've never criticized Les for having standing on the show. I understand why he did it. He's another Canadian. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, I'm the least critical of of Les. I under, I, I've had conversations with with uh, Jeff about why he did what he did. He wanted to see. He wanted to see if there was any truth to it. Um, and, which is a, and a sign. Piece of, yeah. There's a, there's more with what you can and can't say that goes on there, like we talk about with private conversation. Yep. Um, you know, you got to watch what you say because you can be sued. There's different laws in Canada than there is yeah. in the United States and stuff. So yeah. the level of liable and things like that that can put you in an actionable position, you really got to be careful. So, you know, don't judge less too harshly on standing because if you sat down with him and had a, a face-to-face conversation about standing, you might have a different uh, idea right. about less. That, exactly that exactly that's why i never i never really prejudged it or anything like that um and that's why i i withheld any criticism until i talked to, to jeff i'm like okay you know i hey what you know why and we talked and he saw some of the stuff i had which he hadn't seen before he's like oh wow and he understood um i i, I gotta say um you know, you, you hit the nail on the head, though. There, there's a lot of conversations. You don't know what's going on in the background. Everybody thinks they do. And that that's unfortunate because people say, well, why not? They don't understand the movie. A lot of times people don't understand TV. Now, one would think Michael Merchant would, so maybe now he understands. Maybe he just missed it because I didn't give him the episodes because I, I didn't know until this morning myself till I decided let's do this show. And when I was going through it, I, I, it took me, you know, 20, 20 minutes. I had to go through, I said, well, I think it started here. And I started clicking on all the shows and running through them real quick, looking for the graphics. Because yeah. we always associate our things with the graphics. And I happened to find it. And I remember, okay, 12's not it. 13's not it. 14's not it. And finally I got to episode 21. I'm like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know off my, off the top of my head, and I also say yeah. too, if you want to throw an accusation, you know, you, you got to do your own research. You threw the accusation without doing your research. I told you to be done it. You were expecting me to hand it to you out of the platter. I'm sorry. Sometimes I don't have time. I work. <laughs> I've been back to work three weeks now. So well, you know, we you did know. we we did cover. You know, long story short, we did cover it, and it went at least two shows, and then more. Right, uh, and, and I remember the first show we covered it very briefly, yeah, because there wasn't much to the story after that. I was like, okay, right. so uh, you know what's going on, and then people started picking stuff out, and I kind of picked up on it. Right, so I was like, okay, awesome. I will, uh, I will uh, turn around and and let's let's cover it. We did for a good ten minutes or so talking about that, yeah. and we also talked about stuff like, well, sometimes this is production company, which. Let's talk about, and this is why we wanted to do some of the some of the stuff. Let's talk about, you know, a good example is finding Bigfoot. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's let's remember their season one. Um, and actually, uh, the funny thing is, I actually have uh, a wiki on them, and uh, you know, this is what happens when you have a very popular show. Um. Let me get to this little thing. Uh... Oh. By the way, hey, Walt. Hey, Walt. Big Walt, little Walt. <laughs> I know it's here somewhere. I read it. Reception. Okay. <clears throat> so, it says right here on the wiki, and I remember that. Animal Planet has received criticism for finding Bigfoot and mermaids, the body found, uh, for their outlandishness. However, okay, that was... So, you know, the mermaids, the body found was one of Animal Planet's uh, programs. Remember that whole, dis- we talked about that a few weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, people like making, no offense, Jim, people like making comments like never finding Bigfoot. Um, 
you know, come on. I think it was a stupid name to begin with, Finding Bigfoot. You know, that, again, is a production name. And, you know, it, it, you know it's like, you know, uh, Shooting Bigfoot or... You know, there, there's a, you know, they, they could have called it looking for Bigfoot. They could have called it a number of things and people, you know, wouldn't have. People got to realize this, that finding Bigfoot. I mean, I did, I did find the Bigfoot. I, I spent nine days on one episode. I actually was involved in two episodes and uh, I, I was on one and then just involved in the other one. Right. Um, people have to realize that. When you watch it, you know immediately this show was not made for the hardcore no. uh, Bigfoot or cryptozoological enthusiast, the, the researcher, the hard... It wasn't made for the hardcore. This was made for the, the people that flip through the channel and watch every Bigfoot show that comes on. Um, yeah. They are it was made for entertainment purposes. It was made for the 12, 14, 16-year-old kids that just love the monsters and all of those things. This show was really made for that. It was 100% entertainment. It had some great people on it. James, Bobo, Faye, he, he and I are the best of friends. He is a yeah. great human being. Uh, Cliff and I are good friends. Uh, oh, my goodness. I, I made some good friends there. Absolutely. But, but at the same time, I mean, I, I'll say this. I threatened to throat punch Moneymaker more than once whenever I was filming. <laughs> you know, um, he and I hate one oh. I, I I'm much more diplomatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm much more diplomatic. Okay. I I, 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 underst I understand you him. Me, you cross me, you better have a bulldog butt to match up with that bulldog <laughs> mouth. Because if you got a hummingbird butt and a bulldog mouth, you ain't gonna be happy when I get done. Yep. Um, that's just. I mean, I'm from Texas. That's just the way we do. Things. Yep. And here here's the thing. I I've worked on. I worked on a few episodes myself. Uh, I've worked on the, the uh, Mother Bigfoot episode. I've worked on the uh, the Baby Bigfoot episode. I worked on the um, I've worked on White the Hall. Vermont episode, the Whitehall Vermont episode. Yeah. Um, and you know they did their best to try to get whatever they could. They really did. They, they, but I was there more than one time when the director said, okay, we got to go. Come on, we got to go. We got to go. So, you know, they, it's a job. And when the boss says you got to go, you got to go. Um, exactly. I mean, there were things and, that went on that I wasn't happy with, right. but I had no say in them because I was on their dime, basically. Yeah. And I had signed their little contract thing that you have to sign in order to do the show. I mean, it's not a real extensive one, but it is a little contract. And, you know, I basically, I mean, when you're employed, you do what the boss says or you quit. So you have to draw that line where, okay, here's my line. As long as you're not asking me to lie, then, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, if we have to leave right whenever the stuff's getting good, then we just have to leave. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, I I luckily was not under any contractual obligation to to the show. They, you know, they asked me to come out and help them, you know, scout some locations, meet, you know, meet some witnesses, stuff like that, which I did. I don't, I never saw anything that was disingenuously done. You know, everything that was done was genuine. There was nothing, you know, faked. At least in my presence. Um, so I, I can only speak from experience. I know Cliff did his remote thing one night when they were doing the remote thing. And I was actually, while they were filming him, I was actually there for, you know, a few hours with him. And we actually sat together, but they kept me off a of camera because it was supposed to be a solo mission. That was about the only disingenuous thing was, okay, I'm, I'm there. And we know he's got a cameraman there. So, you know. <laughs> well, you know, they... And gotta, what the hell? Like I, want, I, wanted, I wanted to hang out with Cliff in the field. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so, Cliff is a stand-up guy, man. I sure like is. him. As a matter sure of fact, he, I think he was on the show before the first episode of Finding Bigfoot aired. He That's was like right. doing that, a, a promo for it. That was the show we did remotely mm -hmm. from the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. Okay. And cool. he was the guest that night. 
and it yeah. was all about hey coming up next week is this new show yeah yeah so cool. you know and, and i also got to say because they had genuine people on the show i think that helped with its and the appeal the universal appeal the kids and stuff like that it it, it did it did um something just happened <laughs> uh it, it it did last for nine seasons a long time for a show like that yeah um which is awesome i uh, i think i always say it had some positive stuff it had some negative stuff but uh, there's also something i, I want to make mention of too and this is in the wiki too it said several episodes of the first season received heavy criticism from the four finding bigfoot members themselves for editing style that animal planet had used yeah. to make it appear that a horse and a person were I identified by the team and what they were and what they were remained unknown the second event involved the horse led the team to threaten to quit the show if such techniques were used again yeah so there yeah, we are that... that's why season one was kind of uh eh, but season two seemed to be a little bit better Right, yeah, and it, I think by the final I've season, involved, huh? I've been involved with many shows that what we filmed out in the field and sent, they sent or took into the editing room. Yep. The guys that are editing this are not the guys that are in the field. Yep. It's not even the the director and the producer and people like that in the field. This gets sent back to wherever their production company is. It may be in Hollywood. It may be Los Angeles. It may be wherever. And these guys are over here in filming another episode while that yeah. stuff has been sent to the editing. And what those guys do in editing, the people that they were involved with making the show have no control over whatsoever. Right. And they that had, they had at least enough integrity to say, listen, you need to stop this or we're going to quit. Yeah. To me, that speaks integrity, and I knew about this. You know, I you know I, I knew what was going on at the time, but it was all hushed. But it's very true. They had all threatened to quit. Say, listen, this isn't going to happen. You know, either that or you can. You know, so that that was you know that was cool. And, and like I said, that shows at least some some integrity. Now this so, has been several years ago, but I seem to remember that uh, when this first came out, Matt Moneymaker was like on the BFRO website posting or something look dudes you know look guys this was a horse you know <laughs> yeah. we're not trying to hoax anybody you know i don't know why they, oh, they did, actually, did it where they did yep. he actually went on uh cryptomundo there was a thread on cryptomundo i remember because i commented on it on cryptomundo where he went on there and and answered why he said yes we know what this was it was a horse we confirmed it it just got edited out yep and yeah. you know so I mean, he he addressed it, and, right. and Boba addressed it. Several several of the cast members have addressed it, yeah. and they've addressed other aspects that have been edited funky or differently or wrongly or whatever you want to put it. And, and you know, they've addressed a lot of things. And I just keep reminding people: it's entertainment. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. Yeah. You know, Sometimes, it, it, yeah. Yeah. if you yeah. want to watch a documentary then you need to specifically go and watch a documentary. Yep. Now, shame on certain shows that present themselves as being a 100% actual documentary oh, type oh, show. Hang on. hang on. You mean that one? <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, that one. The one that we all got so many... Uh, uh, yeah. emails and, and messages yeah. and voicemails from everybody saying, yeah. oh, my God, they got him. They got him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then they, you know. Uh, so let, let's close out Finding Bigfoot real quick. So like, like yeah. I said, they, uh, what I always thought were the pluses is that they made Bigfoot not a four-letter word anymore. I think they brought out a lot of people uh, that, you know, felt a little more uh, braver, a little more less uh um freaking word i'm looking for uh less scared is the best word i can use right now um <clears throat> yeah millions uh, of people less do scared yeah watch episodes of finding bigfoot it it literally took the the fringe uh connotations of yeah. of bigfoot and put it in a living 
rooms of people that didn't really believe in Bigfoot, but man, this show's fun, you know, yeah. and kind of took some of that fear, some of that uh, uh, look down your nose at these Bigfoot black oak, you know, and it kind of got rid of a little bit of that, uh, the way we were looked at. Yep. Right. Yeah. I think since uh, finding Bigfoot brought Bigfoot mainstream, uh, you know, the, the increased awareness, it made it, uh, uh, people were, who were, didn't really want to talk about a sighting before like after the show that aired a few times they started watching it and they're like they might tell their buddy hey man you remember a couple of years ago when we was fishing over there and i went off over there yeah, yeah i saw something in the woods <laughs> yeah, now, you know? Here, here's the flip side of that coin <laughs> they can tell about how bigfoot comes and gets garlic and cinnamon from them <laughs> this is true yeah it works both ways oh, yeah that's right uh here's the here's the <laughs> jeff <laughs> for his uh for his uh spaghetti and and uh bread you know yeah the, the, the flip side of that though is they made bigfoot research look really easier than what it is yeah yeah they made it all three knocks and whoops and uh, they they really employed some very interesting and great <laughs> techniques <clears throat> but they also employed some really off the wall techniques and those were the ones people remembered so you know, it reminds me of the days uh, when Henry Franzoni, uh, that old A&E special uh, documentary, when Henry Franzoni was in the middle of the, the forest playing his drums, hoping Bigfoot will show up. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, anyway, it was a good show. A lot of people are saying, yeah, it was a good show for TV. And, you know, David says they still made it look silly. They did. <clears throat> Again, I don't know how much... Uh, you got to understand, they made it look silly, but the actors didn't make it look silly. Remember, it's the editors that did. Yeah. Um, you know, it, my, it's all it's my, all in the editing process. My favorite because, part of Finding Bigfoot was Cliff Bergman. Okay. <laughs> you know, here's the interesting thing. Um, you know, when I did the Loch Ness special, yep. you know, you can tell ed they do great jobs editing because they made me look like a friggin' rock star. You know, they got me coming in. Down. Bobo is not the big, dumb woman no. that they made him out to be. He no. is a very highly intelligent man, and he, he, he can sit and have a conversation with you about anything you want to have a conversation about, you know, from, you know, uh, cryptozoology to flipping mathematics or whatever. You know, I mean, Bobo James is not an yeah. idiot. He is a very smart man. Yeah, Bobo was playing a role. He was playing a role. They edited it in such a way that um, he fit that lovable big lummox yep. that everybody wants in a show, and they edited him to be that big, big guy and the big galoot. Yeah, know, yeah. And they want they wanted they they wanted the skeptic. They wanted the the the, the big the big bumbling guy. They wanted the the little brainiac, and they wanted the guy with the big mouth, and that was and what I, they. Ten minutes into a conversation with Renee, you'll find out that she was not nearly as big a skeptic as they portrayed her to be. Yeah. So. So anyway, uh, here we go with this big uh, Bigfoot captured. Now here's a scenario where you know, and, and Jeff has been, uh, Doctor Jeff Meldrum has been very outspoken about this that. Here's these crews, and they, they interviewed him. I believe they interviewed Bender Noggle at the time. Uh, I forget who else was on the show. There was a couple I don't know. Other, but, I, um, I, I know they got Meldrum for sure, yeah. Um, and, and they got that, that, that one. Um, I don't know if they put that wacky guy from the Colorado on there. Uh, what's his name? The guy that thought the aerial thing was a Bigfoot. Uh, wasn't Kelly Shaw on that thing? Oh, God. I don't know. But uh, anyway... Um, so, you know, here's a show where they said, oh, we're doing this documentary on, on Bigfoot, and they're, they're filming all these serious segments, but what they didn't tell them is in the background, they're doing this, you know, BS part. And, uh, you know, I, I, I blame it on the Bilderbergs. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Go away, Alex. Um, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, they didn't tell Dr. Meldrum that this was no, going, this no, footage was no, going nobody, to be used. 
for a mockumentary. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So, and that can happen to anybody if they're yeah. they're they're disingenuous, and um, you know, so you got to be very careful about what people are doing. Um, just recently, um, uh, uh oh, hey Don, good to see you, brother. Don. Um. Jim Jernigan's, I like that comment, Jim. That's that is so true. But Steve will probably, Steve will not pro put it up there. Steve, put it up there. I want to make no. you put that up there. Put it up there. I know you're modest, but I, I I'm there. You go. He does Thank a good you. job on film. He surely does. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> oh, he does. We lost. Oh. We dropped Jeff. Hopefully, he'll get back on. Oh, Jeff, where'd he go? He dropped. We're Maybe he'll back. Yep. <clears throat> So, you know, like I said, this capturing Bigfoot thing was just really, uh, and we're going to get to the question. Somebody asked, how many dogs does Jeff have? There he is. Hey, Jeff, while yeah. you were gone, we do, have a question. We, we do have a question. Somebody in the chat room, and I forget where it is. Somebody asked, how many dogs do you have? Um, I run a rescue. Uh, I have the only rescue in the county in which I live. And uh, I have around 40 uh, dogs that we take care of on a daily basis here on our property. We have uh, kennels and uh, fenced-in yards and things like that. And we, we, uh, we go out and get mostly the ones that are in bad shape if they've been run over and uh, can't get vet help. I have a veterinarian that works with us, and we get help. Uh, so they, we, we do all we can to help. Uh, now, I'm not some, I'm not somebody that's trying to save the world, but you know, I, I have a heart. <laughs> well, well done, Jeff. Very good, well very done. good, man. We love our Thank canines. You. Proud of you. <laughs> oh man, I, I also do wildlife rehabilitation for the state, yeah. and yeah. so we, we've had deer. We've had I've I've done raptor rehabilitation with owls. Um, we have had raccoons, possums, just about every kind of animal that, that uh, can get run over on the highway yeah. we've yeah. had at one point or another. Jeff, do you have a website, by the way, for that? Um, just a Facebook uh, uh, page that is Sunshine Shoulders Rescue. Sunshine Shoulders Rescue. Let's, let's make sure. And is there a way people can donate to that, by the way? Yes, uh, I have a PayPal account, which is skstewart underscore 99 at yahoo.com. And anyone, it is greatly appreciated, and every dime that is ever donated goes 100% to the animals. And they, uh, they can also get that off the Facebook page, Good deal. Yes. So it's called, uh, I'm sorry, shoulders? What's the first word? Sunshine shoulders. Sunshine shoulders. From the song, you know, Sunshine on My Shoulders, and mm -hmm. so it's Sunshine yeah. Shoulders. We yeah. actually uh, had rescued a little dog and uh, named her Sunshine, and uh, she actually uh, got killed last year. Oh. Uh, a, a guy purposefully ran up into my driveway and hit her. I watched him do it. She was standing about 10 feet inside my driveway. And the guy came down my street, swerved up into the, my my driveway, and hit her and killed her. Mm. That's yeah, uh, that's horrible. I'm still looking for that fella. Yeah, I'd like mm. to take a bat to him. <laughs> Uncle Uncle Jeff may catch a felony on that one. <laughs> and, and 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 Pat Pat said he'll take all your chihuahuas. <laughs> um, we have uh, nine ten. We have 11 chihuahuas. That's a lot of chihuahuas. And, 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 oh. and we have a couple of Boston Terriers and a couple of Jack Russell Terriers. And they have their own room in my house. The, the chihuahuas don't stay out in the kennels. They stay in the house. And so they have a room in which I totally gutted the room. There's nothing in the room. I uh, painted the floor with, like, the, the paint that you paint, like, a shop floor mm. with. Yeah. So that it's totally, you know, waterproof and everything. And they have, I built kennels along the wall. So they each have their own beds and things in those little kennels. And, uh, oh my goodness, they, they have their, 
toys and uh, all their little things, and it, it's amazing. They, the, the, our chihuahuas are almost like our babies. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And boy, when they go on a stampede, <laughs> the ground shakes. Hey. The... I'm going to tell you what, I'm oh. sorry for anybody that would break into my house because from the ankles down, they are dead. <laughs> <laughs> His ankles are shredded. <laughs> I'm telling you what, dude. Oh, man. You know, I, I used to have three chihuahuas, and I got a bulldog pup. And I remember every night at 11 o'clock, the chihuahuas would stampede. Hmm. And they would run from one end of the house to the other. And they would... Yep. Boom, 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 we call that romper room. When they right. do that, we call that the romper room time. Okay. So then I got the bulldog puppy. And then you would hear this. Oh man. He was always in the back, slower than anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they uh, well, you know, dogs are awesome. No matter what size, what breed, they're all awesome. So I, I have a I have an affinity for dogs. And I have a rescue cat here too. Her name is Charlie and uh she just, you know, always remembers that, uh, you know, I rescued her because, my goodness, and when I'm sitting on the couch, she wants my attention. And yeah. I'll be sitting there on the couch. She'll get up on the back of the couch, start headbutting me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what the? Can't have, knock it off. Can't you? have any cats. We have, I have a pet raccoon. And my pet raccoon molests cats. So <laughs> you got a pet raccoon? He weighs, he, he weighs like 40 pounds. His name is George Cooney. <laughs> That's his name, George Cooney, Good name. and uh, he he lives in our house like a like a rabid three year old. Um, you'll find him in the kitchen cabinet. He's just pushed everything out of the kitchen cabinet onto the floor, and he's laying on his back inside the kitchen cabinet. Like what? You didn't want me to do that? Tough, you know. So he's awesome though. Oh. We've had him since he was th uh, about three or four days old. And uh, he's three years old now, so he's off. <laughs> My sister-in-law has three chihuahuas, and someone tried to break in the house and stuck his head in the window, and the chihuahuas mauled his face. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just see this guy running down the street with, like, a chihuahua hanging off his ear, another one off his lip or something? <laughs> <laughs> get it off, oh. get it off. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, they oh, that's, that's bound to leave some sort of complex for life, you know, every time he goes to sleep. <laughs> Get that thing away from me! Get him away! Uh, I, I blame the uh, I blame the uh, I blame the Bilderbergs and walking around Moloch. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm still doing that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so Bigfoot capture is a great example of always be on the guard what you're signing up for. Um, you know, uh, Jim Jernigan mentioned, will there be something new coming along? Uh, let me, I'll get to that towards the end, um, because I'll, I'll explain a little, a little thing I've kind of discovered lately, which is kind of disconcerting and it should be disconcerting to everybody. So, uh, so anyway, now we have coming up this fine program. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and that had uh, went round and round. Yeah, you know, so here's a show that we kind of know they were producing evidence and laying it askew a to, for people to find. And the funny thing is, is it's for Bigfoot evidence. And usually the people who came up with nothing got eliminated. The people that came up with scat or shit, they were the ones that usually got passed over for the next episode i don't know uh, uh did i watch the show i don't remember watching it maybe 15 minutes of it 20 minutes of it it just i, I couldn't take it couldn't take it um i was actually cast originally cast on the show um we were going through the uh they were doing skype interviews at the time and I had made it through several interviews, and uh, we went to one of the uh, final stages of interviews, and the 
guy that was interviewing me said, just for instance, if we had to fabricate some evidence for a show, uh, would you be okay with that? And I said, no, I would never do that. And I would not be involved with any publication, any show, anything that would do that. Okay, thank you very much for blah, blah, blah. And we said our niceties and we'll be back in touch with you. Never heard from them for like months. <laughs> and then they messaged me back, emailed me back, and uh, wanted to have another Skype interview with me. And this uh, really nice young African American gentleman came on, and uh, we had about an hour long conversation. And then he hit me with a question Would I be willing to come and work for the show and place evidence? Four contestants, and we're not going to say that it's real evidence. We're just going to see if they can discern whether this evidence is real or not. And I was like, no, I see where this is heading. I, I'm, I, won't, I don't want to be involved in ever fabricating evidence on a TV show for a big right. yep. Yeah. And, and it, they said, thank you very much. And we hung up and everything. The guy was very cordial. I mean, there was nothing harsh or anything. And I didn't get to be on the show. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's kind of funny because I, they, uh, I interviewed for that too, that show too. But then, as the tenure of the show started, uh, they actually had sent somebody to my house. They filmed me live at my house, talking about stuff, showing me some of my, showing me the. I was showing them the Ford and cast and some of the other items uh, that have been collected over the years, and one of the things she had said was well how would you be feel, feel about being teamed up with somebody that maybe you didn't get along with and i'm going wait 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 wait, wait. this is and ot says sound like what they are doing is muttering muddying the waters on evidence not only were they looking to muddy the waters on evidence but they were looking to muddy the waters drama on the dynamic <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and, uh, you know, after she left, I got thinking, and it took me a few days, but I started talking with some of my friends, and, and not Bigfoot friends, I mean, friends that, you know, uh, know my moral compass, and uh, talking about it, and uh, I was like, no, uh, they never mentioned about any fabrication of anything to me at that point, but what they, they the, the whole contestant type of deal... Um, they never said the word fake, otherwise I would have said, nope, not, not interested, have a nice day. But they had mentioned, you know, just like the, the whole game show aspect of it and challenges, but were, were being very uh, slick about what the challenges really were going to be. And I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to sit there and do these stupid, uh, you know, challenges like they do on these other, you know, reality game shows, you know, like the... Uh, the amazing race and stuff like that, you know. Oh well, now you got to sit. In a, you got to sit in this bed of worms. No, I, I'm not. I'm not playing that bullshit. Um, You're off the island, Steve. I'm off the island. Well, I took myself off the island before I even got to it. So I, I call him back and say, Nah, you know, I thought about this. Not interested. I appreciate it. Have a great, great time. And uh, it was such a, it was such, such an amazing success that after eight episodes, it was done. <laughs> I knew I know lots of the people that were on the show, and I don't want anybody to think that they hoaxed anything or that they were even mm. approached to do that. No. This is what me alone. This is my conversation whenever right. I was being interviewed for being cast on the show. Right. So I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody that was involved. Every, every one of the people that was on the show have their own uh, positives and negatives and everything that you can go find out for yourself I, i'm not saying that they did anything wrong i'm just attesting what i was asked to do no uh, somebody asked was this discovery no it was at the time it was a, a channel called spike tv which eventually turned into yeah. true tv which eventually turned into the paramount network yeah so, and it originally started out as the national, national network. network yep you're right yeah. so talk about a channel that was struggling the only the only show they ever had that was really that people really like was uh, was uh, um, what the hell was that? Um, not uh, not Pawn Stars. The other hardcore porn, pawn, hardcore pawn. Yeah, pawn, pawn. Yeah, it's like 
It's a tongue twister. Hardcore <laughs> pawn. Bowser, Steve. Huh? <laughs> the there, yep, there it is again. The, um, you know, the uh, Bilderbergs no, are interfering with the radio here. Uh, he, he got it right. I just wanted to emphasize pawn. pawn. Hardcore <laughs> pawn. Actually... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I saw uh, I saw a three hundred pound man wearing some shorts from Lulu that, that store Lululemon. Yeah, he dropped something, bent over. I saw his Lulu and two of his lemons. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, uh, sorry, just time for a dumb joke to break things but, up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the Bigfoot bounty was pretty much a Bigfoot flop. Yeah. That didn't and, work too and well. And nobody got the $10 million. Well, yeah, they, they, they picked an area. I mean, they could have picked Central Park, you know. Oh. Unless you, if you can find Bigfoot in Central Park, we'll give you $10 million. Yeah, okay, right. Well, you know, it's a pretty safe bet. You could, you could throw a, a $10 billion bounty out there. And you got to pretty much well say, you know, people have basically been searching for this particular cryptid for, I don't know, the past 70 years or some odd like that, and no one has dropped that body on the doorsteps of ABC, NBC, CBS, any, you know, any reputable news organization. Nobody's dropped that body. So you're pretty much bet that nobody's going to drop it in the eight episodes of this show. <laughs> Mr. Celtic? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a graphic discussion, but yes, Expedition Bigfoot is on our list. We're getting there. <laughs> oh, so, sorry, I forgot to mute out. <laughs> now we have Mountain Monsters. Hey, I uh, love that. Love that show. I do. It's entertaining, but it's fake, and we all know it. <laughs> yes, that's why. Yeah. Um. Love those guys. Uh oh, guess guess who showed up? Hi B. Hey B. <laughs> she was, Welcome. She was driving, but she was listening. Mm. So You know, Mountain Monster is another one of those shows that I mean, watch it for the entertainment value, but right. if you're watching it uh, if you're watching it expecting them you know, to catch anything or do anything, because, I mean guys, come on. Yeah. Every single place they go to there is a devil or a monster or a Yahoo or, I mean, if you believed this show, you would be scared to go in your own backyard because there's some kind of a 12-foot right. tall monster with 8-inch fangs right. in your garage. And, right. and, you know, here's the, here's the thing, too, is when they're, they're out doing their little public appearances, they don't talk about being Bigfoot experts. They don't talk about being monster experts. They just sure. hang out, meet the crowd, smile at them, make them laugh a little, and that's yeah. it. They don't yeah. say they're experts on anything but, uh, you know, maybe hunting or trapping or whatever their professions were. And, uh, like, like Willie is a, this excellent guy. He does a lot of woodworking. Uh, Wild Bill, well, Wild Bill is exactly that. He's funny <laughs> as hell. Um <laughs> And every time I run into him, he punches me in the arm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, one of them that I've spent any time with talking to were just salt of the earth uh, people. I was, I've been on several podcasts with different members of uh, that show, and every single one of them were, were just salt of the earth. Yes, yes. They're, they're great, and they don't make any reservation. They don't try to say, yes, this is all real. You know, at, at they, I think on the end of the show, it's like uh, – all they're they're filmed on the same location somewhere in West Virginia or something. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. But, but it's supposed to be they're going to different states and everything. But man, I watched that the first episode I saw was when they were doing the Ohio Grassman, and uh, the the heavy set guy with the shotgun rolled in the creek. Uh, I can't remember his name. But, um, anyway, he rolled in the creek, and I fell in love with this show right then. I said, "Oh my God, this is hilarious! This is yeah. great." And, uh, you know, of course, you know, it's, I knew it was for entertainment. It's <laughs> now, now here, here is something else that hmm. people may or may not know, but I had long discussions with Huck, Huckleberry, hmm. 
and he is a child a young young adult had a sighting of a bigfoot which is really oh. interesting and he pulled me aside we talked about it quite a bit yeah and that was it you'll never really mention it to him. i don't think he ever mentioned it on the tv show but he did have an encounter with something when he was a child yeah. And, you know, that's about it. You know, it's nothing extravagant. It's nothing, you know, it's just, uh, you know, hey, you know, I, I was, you know, on my property as a kid. And, you know, there it is. Yeah. You know, nothing. And it walked off. So, uh, and, and Buck, for people who don't know, Buck is actually a corrections officer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they're a good bunch of guys uh, just doing a TV show because the chemistry they have together makes people laugh. And yes. if you've ever seen them just hanging out, they are funnier than than sin. Funnier. Yeah. Than sin. It's a very entertaining show. I mean, if you watch it purely for entertainment value, it is right. a very right. entertaining show. And like you said, you will laugh yes. from the beginning of it to the end of it if you watch it to enjoy it yeah. Yeah. instead of taking seriously right exactly because if you think it's serious you're going to be ticked off through the whole show just watching it mad <laughs> if yeah you watch it for what it is then you're going to enjoy the crap out of it right yeah right, right. yeah uh next show up here it comes there it is killing bigfoot <laughs> <sighs> You know, I, I can't really say much about this one because I only watched about five minutes of one episode. And, and the thing is, the guys that are on the show live within like 40 miles of me. Or some of these guys, uh, uh, you know, they live really close to me. And everybody's like, oh, you got to know this person. No, I don't. Mm. Um, because, and I'm going to say this right off the bat. <laughs> I am a, a firearms expert. I have been the firearms wrangler on a few movies and things like that, and I am an uh, ex-law enforcement officer, and, and I am an NRA-trained instructor, firearms instructor. And I really had an issue with this show because of their unsafe handling of firearms. That was one of my big pet peeves with the show. If they're even loaded. But the thing is, whether they're loaded or not, they're perceived as being uh, yeah. loaded. And they are... I don't like little children. I don't like kids. I don't like the uneducated. Seeing them do these things with farms. And what if they go out <laughs> and, put and they emulate what these people are doing? Yeah. And you know, their shotgun is loaded. And they're out there being irresponsible. And I, I'm, I for one... Uh, I really take issue when TV shows that portray themselves as being authentic have irresponsible firearms management. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll get off my soapbox, but I just wanted to say You, that. you mean kind of like Rick Dyer handing the, uh, the Rick Dyer handoff of the rifle to Morgan Matthews and uh, shooting Sasquatch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this show, obviously you can see that this show seems to me to be very staged. Uh, otherwise, how would you get these nice, crisp... If they're really supposed to be in position hiding, well, how is the camera getting a picture of them in with light? <laughs> you know, it's like you can tell. Now, they would all be in that, that IR green where you wouldn't see them. And you can tell sometimes they'll put a green filter on it, but it's not real IR. Because their eyes don't when reflect in, back and stuff like that. So, when I'm in the woods and I don't want you to see me, you're not going to see me. You know I mean, right. you're not gonna. You're, you're, I'm gonna be in such a a spot in a position to to utilize the terrain, to utilize the foliage, to utilize the shadows and everything. You will not see me. And and, and, my, my... and if, if I'm sitting there with a with, with, and you can film me with your camera. And I look like I'm, you know, sitting right beside you. Then I'm not hiding. <laughs> right. And uh, just so you know, they did rename the show. The show is now titled yes, "Bigfoot is Real." Because Bigfoot is real. I, I guess killing. I guess killing Bigfoot was too hard of a topic. Or too. Well, you know, it's kind of like finding Bigfoot only to the nth degree because you know we all know that. The guys and gals never found Bigfoot, but these people right here, I mean, 
in all honesty, here's here's what I tell everybody when that wants to go and kill a Bigfoot. What are you gonna do when you pull the trigger and you walk up and cousin Fred in a costume that he bought because he thought it was funny or somebody's son, somebody's daughter or something, and you went out into these woods and oh look, Bigfoot boom and you just murdered somebody. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird. They 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 claim they have these protocols, which they may. Um, maybe some of it's real and some, a lot of it's recreation. I'm not sure. Um, but to me, you know, from what I've seen, uh, from what I've seen, eh. right. And and David, here's the thing. I am I wear camo out in the field. Why do I wear it out in the field? Uh, it's not to hide from Bigfoot. I wish this thing would work a little more response, be a little more responsive. Uh, it's not to not to hide from Bigfoot. In actuality, you know, Bigfoot will come to you, uh, or will come closer to you if you're just acting normal. Yep. And it doesn't yeah. matter what you're wearing. You can wear pajamas. You can wear, uh, you, you can wear um, um, cardigans. You can wear camo. The reason why I choose to use cato, uh, camo is because, number one, I want to shield myself from the bad animals that are out there. And number two, I want to shield, if I have to, I need to shield myself from people. Because sometimes the places we go, you don't yeah. know what you're going to encounter. Meth labs, pot grow fields, stills, just to name a few. You know, and that's why you have to, you know, that's why I don't get, I don't get all, you know, bent out of shape if people go tactical, if they carry weapons, whatever, because the the most dangerous thing out there is not the animals, it's man. Yeah. That's right. And, and that, and we are the apex predator on the planet. You got to remember that. So. Mr. Moore and I have done uh, a whole series. Uh, on his more outdoors uh, radio program on that exact subject of how you know our uh, most dangerous encounters and how we've we've found you know I, I've come upon more than one meth lab in the woods and he's come upon uh, several uh, you know uh, pot growing uh, fields and, and things like that you know and you know, you come upon these things, you may need to disappear real quick before somebody gets a shot at you or, you know, finds yeah. who you are and comes to the house or anything. So, yeah, the, the human element is, is one of the things that I like to disappear from. And not only that, but I'm not trying to have an encounter like the hiker or the backpacker or whatever with Bigfoot. Yep. I'm trying to fit more into their environment in a way so that I might get a prolonged encounter rather than that, you know, oh, gosh, I saw him for eight-tenths of a second and couldn't get a picture, you know. Uh, so if I can blend more into, because I know I'm not hiding from them. I know they can smell me. They can see me. They can hear me. But I'm just trying to be more... Or should I say, be less offensive? Yeah. As I take myself into their environment. Yeah. <clears throat> now the, the the final show we're going to talk about this evening, and then we'll talk about a few other things too, uh, is Expedition Bigfoot. Now, again, I have watched very little of that show. I've watched it in snippets and pieces. Um, I'm taking the reactions from people. Uh, people aren't too happy with the show, and, and and from what I know, it hasn't yet to be renewed. And I I remember uh, originally, in fact, uh, this may even be on uh, the episode fifteen where I talked about the qualifications of the people that are on the show, because none of, uh, with the exception of Ronnie LeBlanc, who I've known for you know as a researcher for a while, I don't know him personally. Um. I, I've never heard of, you know, uh, the doctor or the other guy, the actor or turned Bigfoot enthusiast. And Brian uh, Goldbesky. Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Go. Yeah. Goldbesky. 
I uh, I've known him for about five or six years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew him. He actually approached me several several years ago to educate him uh, as much as possible on uh, some cryptozoology stuff and some actual wildlife based things. Um, I can't speak on his qualifications in any way, shape, or form or take away from him. But I will say this. Uh, I, I don't have anything bad to say about the young man. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I agree. I, I don't think there's anything really bad about any of them. I just don't think, you know, the way they got billed was proper. You know, oh, we have this crack team of Bigfoot experts out here. And we're like, what? Hmm. Huh. You know, and I understand these folks are not responsible for that. And people got to understand that, too, is that, you know, uh, the, you know, our, our good friend Darren Lee the other day <laughs> and he even said, well, I don't know about the expert thing, but the paper said, oh, we have a Bigfoot expert talking about, you know, it, it's people got to understand the term expert is we all get hung up on. Oh, they called him a Bigfoot expert. Oh, well, number one, when you're called the Bigfoot expert, it's usually not. A self-titled thing. I don't come out and say, "Hi, I'm a Bigfoot expert." And no, that's not how it is. Somebody says, "Hey, we have Bigfoot expert Steve Coles on." Well, I, oh, I, amongst Thank us, <laughs> amongst us, we're colleagues. Yeah, right? and I, I right? too have now, been told as an expert, and I and I've told them forty times before they write something or do something like, "I am not a Bigfoot expert because I don't believe there is a such thing right. as a Bigfoot expert." And then the next thing you know, the newspaper article or something comes out and it says Bigfoot expert. But hold and on, people let, are hammering me. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me stammer you right on that. I say there are such a thing called the Bigfoot expert, and but what qualifies that as an expert? What qualifies you as an expert? Amongst ourselves, we're colleagues. Remember, when you when a plumber goes to a plumbing con, uh, or a carpenter goes to a carpenter's convention, there are no experts. They're all colleagues. But if I call a carpenter in to build me a cabinet, he's the expert. The plumber is the expert. You know, I have a guy that, that knows about metal detecting. I know nothing about that. He comes in to show me how a metal detector is used. He's the expert. We all get... Are, are, we're such fragile ego people that, oh, they called him an expert. Oh, my God. That's, no, amongst ourselves, we're colleagues. If they get called an expert, we are the experts. All of us are the experts compared to the lay people that sit there and watch TV and don't do anything about this. It's a point of view. It's a viewpoint. And if you look up the definition of expert, it will tell you it's, it's somebody that has an expertise in a particular area. Yes, we all have expertise in a particular area. Even the peep woo folks, if they believe that, that whatever, then they have their own little expertise. Is it is it based on science? Maybe not. But the, remember, the the term expert is based off the word expertise. Yeah. And compared to me and Joe Schmo on the street, that's never you know never been out in the woods to look for a Bigfoot. Yeah, uh, people who have seen them, people who have experienced, people who have tracked them. Yes, they are the experts compared to other people. But amongst ourselves, amongst you, amongst Chris, amongst, you know, anybody else, uh, you know, a lot of people in the chat that have gone out and done things. We're just colleagues. We're not experts. And that's the way I look at it. Does that kind of make sense to you, Jeff? I, yeah, in a way, you know, my, my take on it is there can be experts in the legend and the lore, uh, but, and, and there can be people that have a certain expertise in the field. I just am the, I'm the one of those guys that say, you know, I, I equate it to not, they're not being a recognized course of study and a degree type uh, thing. And, but, you but, know, when you talk about experts, but, but then again, but, if you have a room full of physicists, I agree. If you have a room full of physicists, nobody there is an expert amongst themselves. They're colleagues. I, I, I totally agree with yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. I and, mean, and, and I Pat understand. says, yeah. And then Pat says there are no Bigfoot experts because there's no knowledge of what Bigfoot is. And to that, I say wrong, because we know we know they're a primate. Come on, look at them: articulate hands and feet, large brain, fe, you know, forward-facing eyes. Uh, 
no, no prehensile no, tail. Wrong. They're a lemur. Huh? They're a lemur. They're yeah. a lemur. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. I put that in there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So we, 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 we do know stuff. We do have knowledge of what a Bigfoot is, but not to the conclusion. You know, it's like looking at, you know, really, you know, if somebody goes out and runs around, you know, uh, looking at monkeys all the time, does that make them a monkey expert versus a primatologist who's never been in the woods, who's never been in the field with them, who who's the who has more experience with them, right? So it's all a frame. It's all a frame of mind. Because and, even with myself, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm filled often, you know, as a wildlife expert. Um, I don't, I mean, I hold a degree, but I don't actually hold a degree in, in uh, zoology. I, I do have uh, a veterinary technician license, and uh, I have, a, I have a, a degree in electronics from uh, the University of Colorado. So, Je but Jeff, I, let me ask you this. But how, how, how long have you hunted? Oh my gosh, I, my dad started taking me into the woods whenever I was six months of age. Okay, so you know what? I would consider you, if I went out hunting with you, I would consider you an expert in hunting. Because compared to me, I know. You know, I know tracking, now I do. But as far as hunting and skinning and, and, and gutting a deer and stuff like that, I have no freaking clue. Yeah, I'm not a hunter, I hunt with a camera, yeah. On, on the on the wildlife side, uh, I've been I've been put to the test by some of uh, the best uh, people that actually hold degrees in marine biology and uh, zoology, things like that, and every one of them have walked away astounded at what I know because I enjoy hmm. animal science to the point I have stuffed my mind full of every piece of literature I could read yep. about animals and about their habitat, animal husbandry, all of those things about, I've, I've made it my point with my Bigfoot research, that every animal that lives in my particular area of research, I know exactly, I know every call they make, I know where they bed, I know the nests they make, I know the just everything they eat i've made it my business to know everything there is about them and i may not know something about the woods of new york and they had some of the animals in new york but in my region of texas i've made myself for lack of a better term an expert on every piece of wildlife uh, fauna that there is i i will say this jeff Nothing sounds louder than a flipping armadillo. <laughs> they sound like a little, they sound like a Sherman tank coming through the woods. <clears throat> okay, Brian Impey is on here uh, listening to this show. Uh, uh, Brian is one of my best friends in the world. I took Brian for his very first uh, Bigfoot expedition camp out, and I gave him the, the royal treatment where we built our own beds we caught our food wild in the woods and cooked it over an open fire well about two o'clock in the morning i go to sleep i pile me up a bunch of leaves i lay down go to sleep during the night this armadillo starts coming through the woods by us and you would have thought it was a gorilla that was on a on a rampage because this armadillo was making so much noise and, and brian was like Man, I don't know what's coming through these woods. Which at the time I didn't either until we shined the flashlight and it was an armadillo. And he's like, "There's no way that that little five pound <laughs> animal sounds like a freight train barreling through these woods." <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are freaking. Um, <clears throat> a couple of questions away. Uh, I I don't get this question. Why was their back? Uh, <clears throat> why was their backup thirty miles away? My only answer to that is Taco Tuesday. Um, I, um, okay, so Brian has a question. Uh, after all the media shows, docudrama, databases, sightings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is there something on the horizon that is a next-level transition to the subject? And 
you know, it is getting really old with all the watered down information and exposure. What do you see as the next quality iteration in the next 10 years? And what I say is eDNA, environmental yeah. DNA collection. Yeah. And yep. if, you, if yep. you were here a few weeks ago when we had Haskell Hart on the show, Dr. Hart, he was yep. talking about, you know, some of the things. And they recently won, and we talked at the top of the show about the Loch Ness article, but there was a uh, uh, an eDNA study from the lock that had nothing abnormal into it it had it had salmon it had trout it had you know whatever but um eels eels um but yeah i really think edna will be the next step and it's not very exciting not very exciting at all um but if anybody's got any other comments there's another section i want to talk about real we talked about expedition bigfoot Yes, there was a lot of things about the show. We know it's set up the whole Antoine Ranch thing. The only thing I got to say is what we don't know is the backstory. And I always caution that, that were there sighting reports that brought them there? Because if you look at the area around the Antoine Ranch, it's pretty flippin' desolate. Uh, and I'm sure they visited some of the sites there. But some of the sites were just kind of like they were looking for filler. Oh, let's do the mine. That looks kind of cool. Oh, here's this old truck. No, to me, that that's very disingenuous. But how much of the talent we can blame for that? And there, there's a difference between talent and production and network. Right. Those, are the, those are the three stages. Right. And the people who have the less pull are the people who are actually doing the work. And that's the talent. You know, right. And and the cameramen and the sound people, the people that have the call or the directors, producers, especially the executive producer and the people on the editing room floor. And we should yep. never forget that this is entertainment and they, for some reason, and we're going to talk about this in a second, uh, but who will do environmental DNA requires professionals nothing to do with Bigfoot World. Uh, that is not true, Pat. Yeah. If you glove up and take a vial of water and cap it, do it. You can send it off for eDNA. It's all in the collection. Anybody can collect DNA. Yep. All you got to do is find the right lab to process the eDNA. If yeah. you take, if you glove up and take a sample of soil under a footprint, right? And you, you cap that up. You can send that away for eDNA. So well, it's. We <clears throat> You know, Might so. be a good thing to start remembering. You know, always add a little baggie to you take your 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 DNA kit and grab soil sample off a of footprint. You know, right, right, absolutely. Yeah, that's the way to go because if any any skin cells flake off that print yeah. into the print itself, you collect that dirt. You know, here's the thing. Well, why not? Pack this. Who pays for it? Well, you do. <laughs> It's your evidence. Edna <laughs> is expensive. Ain't no free... Yeah, unfortunately it is. Ain't no free rides, though, in Bigfooting. People need to quit <clears throat> with the plaster cast thing. Because plaster casts are never... If you're doing it for your... You know, so you got something to sit in the living room or whatever, that's fine. But making them in order to prove that Bigfoot exists, it's never going <clears> to <throat> prove anything. Right. They're better off than... But you suggested, get you a shovel and a baggie and glove up and scoop that entire track under that entire track, and, put it in a gallon Ziploc baggie, and say, you know, of this entire baggie, surely there's one skin cell, you know, right. something that's fluffed off when the step was made. Yeah. Uh, I'm on one side, then the next. I don't understand that, that comment. It, but if there is no Bigfoot DNA, how are you supposed to compare it to a Bigfoot? Can you answer that, Steve? Well, it would come up as an unknown. It would come up in the primate class, and it would yeah. definitely be flagged for, and depending on the DNA, it can eventually be sequenced. Yeah. And I have no idea what you want me to take a stand for, Sean. I have yeah. no clue. The, um... the, the, the question was asked, what do I think the next thing will be? And I said it's eDNA. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm with you on that. I think that that is the most promising tool that we've had in decades. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you know what? I I tend to agree with that as well. Um, 
you know, people, we get into this argument that DNA ain't going to do it. But it's a good start. It's a good start. Well, it will prove that there is something out there. So now, you know, we don't so have a type specimen to go with it. If you, if folks, and that's why I don't, you know, I'm not against the anti-kill people. If you want to grab a gun and go out, or uh, pro-kill people, if you want to go out and grab a gun and and b- believe you need to get a type specimen, go for it. Uh, and Pat, a thermal will not prove anything. It won't. Number one, it's not. Uh, it won't, a picture, a video will not prove anything. It's like a print. No. People yeah. will say it was faked. Yeah. Science will say, well, it's the, it's some, it's some sort of heat signature, but it doesn't prove it's a Bigfoot. Right. We've been down this road before. Yeah. You will either need, you will either need a solid DNA, which again, that's even questionable because I have nothing to compare it to, yeah. and that I agree with. That's why. If you use a, and I've always said this, and exactly, David, I agree. Thermals are for tracking, not proof, or, you know, at least ruling stuff out. Okay, I hear a noise. Okay, that's a deer. Oh, that's a field mouse. Oh, that's an armadillo. Um, and you're right. Yeah, Jim thinks it may take a body. It may, it may very well. Yeah. Um, well, you know, DNA will prove some things, but without. Here's what you can do with DNA. You can say, okay, I, I, I've taken uh, this DNA sample, and we've proved, we've matched, we've sequenced this DNA. This guy that lives ten states away got that exact same DNA match, or oh, with just slight differences. And you're able to say, okay, we've established that Pat. this DNA does not Pat. match anything in GenBank. How do you know I don't know anything about? Aerial thermal technology. How do you know that? Somebody will say it's a man in a suit. You know, I know a lot about aerial techno- thermal technology. Yeah. Um, uh, no matter how good your thermal is, there's always going to be a group out there that's going to It's not going to prove. It. It's not without a right. type. And science will say without a type specimen, it's not going to prove it. You 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 expect a thermal image which shows less definition than a video or a picture. And yet, what's happened with the Patterson-Gimlin film? Yeah. Right? It doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't know a thing. Right. You're absolutely right. And Pat, sorry, this is not a pissing contest. But don't come in here and say that a, a, a aerial thing will... An aerial... Uh, thermal will prove it when in the past it has not. No. No thermal has ever. Whether it's in the sky or on the ground, it don't matter. They'll say it's something else. And I'm not going to get in a pissing contest over this. Well, but look at it like this. What can you show with a thermal? Even the most advanced thermal we have, you can an show image. An, image. an image. You can show a temperature. You can show a relative size of something. That's all great, but you can't show what color it is. You can't show definition of facial features. You can't show any definition all right. that you can. I mean, I've got a camera with a so, 24 megapixel camera on my freaking cell phone, and I can take a picture, and people will say it's fake. Right. And that has way and, more definition than a thermal. And that may be, but one thing thermals can't penetrate, trees. You can't candidate trees. So if you're looking for a Bigfoot in a forest, and it doesn't happen to be walking out in a plane, you know, and by a plane I mean a flatland, you're not going to prove it. You're not going to prove it. And even if you get that shot while it's out in a field, the scientists will say this is just an image and it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't right. prove it's a Bigfoot more than it proves it's a man in a monkey suit. That's what they're going to say. Right. Have you not learned from the last 50, 60, 70 years this has been going on? Right. Um, what, what, I, and I, I hate to throw. Okay. You guys don't know what you're talking about? Pat, I think it's time for you to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on this, man. Hold on. I want to address something real quick. I want to address something. I. 
work on a regular basis in my hunting with some of the most cutting edge thermal optics for night hunting and eradication of feral hogs. I work with a company called Third Coast Thermals, and I have I have got twenty thousand dollar thermal units put in my hands to put on top of rifles to go after feral hogs in uh, Texas. And I'm telling you right now, I, I can tell you it's a hog. I can tell you what at yeah. 300 yards, I can't tell you what color that hog is. I can't tell you. I mean, there's a lot of things that I can't tell you about. But a $25 uh, regular daytime scope on nine power, I can look at that hog and tell you it's a male, whether it's female, what color it is, how yeah. big it is, uh, blah, 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 blah. A $20 $30 rifle scope will give me more definition right. at distance than the most expensive thermal that you can throw at me. That's yeah. a fact. Well, you know, using the thermal as a tool to locate them is perfect. That's fine. That's a good, good yeah. idea. Especially, you yeah. know, in the wintertime when the leaves are gone. Yes, you could use a, a, a aerial thermal from a drone. Uh, that's all I'm going to go. I'm almost say a drone. <laughs> but anyway, no, wait, wait, I'm sorry, Pat. Down, you know. I'm, uh, hold on a second, guys. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Pat. You said trees. I said with the canopy. You said we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> You're being very argumentative. Uh, take it down a notch, please. Well, okay. Uh, uh, you know, in my neck of the woods. The squatches move out of the area when the canopy is down, and they move into the Green Mountains, which is all deciduous pine. So the canopy isn't down in the wintertime for our guys. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, even with the, we see thermals that have been captured before, okay, that may have shown a creature, but it doesn't prove it to science that they exist. Because the scientists can just say, well, yeah, you've got a thermal of uh, some individual there. But, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's Bigfoot. Well, look at it in human terms. You take a human being and you put him 200 yards, even 50 yards down the road. You give me a thermal, even the most advanced thermal there is. I cannot tell you whether he's Caucasian, African-American, Asian, or right. anything. I can't tell you if he has black hair, blonde hair, or red hair. I right. can't tell you if he's, wear, if he's wearing a red shirt, a blue shirt, or black shirt. I can't tell you whether he has a beard or a mustache or <laughs> a color his eyes are or any of those things with a thermal. Right. I can give you a relative size and girth and things like that. They yeah. are a great tool for doing yeah. what you need to do with them. They are a great tool. I still, but I, you I, cannot I, get definition. Right. You can't. And I still say... And I still say that even if you got definition, it wouldn't be good enough for science to say it's real. No. We've been arguing about the Patterson-Gimlin film for how many decades now? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right, Jeff. I, I, I don't think any any film, audio, or anything by itself will, will, will stand. But here's what may. Okay, you take that aerial surveillance and you put that in an area and you capture something on that thermal. And at the same time, you go down to that area and you collect some eDNA. Boom, right there, baby. Now you have it. You see, one technology, if you don't want to put one on a slab or kill one, which I don't, one technology will not work by itself. That's why when I set up DNA traps, I always have a trap camera nearby. Because what happens is... I'm going to have a picture of what's leaving that DNA behind, and that will prove it. So if anybody has listened to this show over the last what, 18 years, when did we start, 2006, 14 uh, years? Uh, Anybody's listened to this over the last 14 years, they know that it's going to take a combination of technologies if you want to be no-kill. And usually my, my MO is trap cam, digital recorder to capture sound, boom. DNA trap. Then you have one, two, three forms of evidence. You can package that up. Okay, here's what we collected it off of. Here's the DNA sample. If you had something big and hairy walking in front of the camera and you collect DNA 
And guess what? The DNA is a bear. Guess what? That big and hairy thing is in front of your, your camera. It's a bear. But at least you have the documentation to prove it's a bear. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, so the same thing. Doing... You have something big and hairy moving in front of your trail camera, and then you find tracks. You take pictures, 3D scans. If there's more than one, you'll take a cast of one, collect the eDNA from the other. Now you have multiple sources of evidence and the eDNA to show where the DNA sample came from. We're doing a, a study right now I'm involved with here in Texas on red wolves. Uh, the red wolf is extinct in the state of Texas, but we have found uh, a remnant population of red wolves. It's mixed with uh, the coyotes. It's diluted. But if I just took a thermal or a photograph of <coughs> one of these animals without DNA, without collecting any kind of DNA, you can't say definitively, oh, well, it does kind of favor a red wolf, but it looks like a coyote too. But what we do is we collect that DNA. And right. that DNA, along with the thermal and the uh, high-def photo and video, you prove that the red wolf's lineage is still alive even though it is diluted and it is mixed with the coyote population, there are still some red wolf, there is still some red wolf DNA out there. Hmm. So that's kind of the same thing we're talking about with this Bigfoot. We've got to have the thermal footage, the regular high definition camera footage, and the DNA, and boom, if you've got all three of those, that's just as good as putting a body on the slab. Now, Chris Noder says, until you have a body alive or dead, it's not going to matter what happens. You have. That may be so. You, you know, that, that, that very well could be too. You know, and that's affirmative. I live in uh, uh -oh. a town called Mix Mixed comment of the night. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's very true. Yeah, whoever asked where I live, I, I live uh, right on the uh, Texas-Louisiana border in a little town called Tenahaw. I live right on the Sabine River. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I... Uh... I, have, I have a lot of uh, property, private property. I actually have over a 1,000 acres of uh, private Missouri's property. Missouri's represented tonight. Good evening, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, um, you know, and wait a minute, Sean, what about me? <laughs> I don't live here in New York. <laughs> um, yeah, Sean says he wants to take you out in Massachusetts at 3 a.m. anytime in October. <laughs> That's very true. I have been out in Massachusetts in the morning, and there have been some things that one particular area that I was taken to that I can't explain. You want to talk about tree knocking? <laughs> tree knocking, and then all of a sudden, something, when we got close, something came down like a tree was pushed out. I'd love to go to Massachusetts for any reason. I've never been and, and would just thoroughly love to be out there in the woods at 3 a.m. You know, that would that would be like a bucket list item for yeah. me. Yep. So, okay, got a question. Steve, tell me your feelings. If you found someone shot a Bigfoot in New York and they say they thought it was a black bear, would you be outraged or relieved that this happened? What would be the consequences? Does New York recognize shoot to kill? So let me, let me explain this to everybody. Um, killing an unknown creature in the United States as far as I know, is not illegal because it's not classified as anything in existence at this time. Now, somebody had asked, well, what if it comes out to be like a homo sapien or an offshoot of a homo erectus or whatever? And it's, it could be considered a homicide, right? No. Under the way the country's laws are written, until, the, uh, until that area or rather that creature ever gets recognized, it's at the point of recognition going forward. So you can't charge somebody 
In other words, okay, somebody shoots a Bigfoot. It turns out to be, let's just say, uh, let's just call it Homo Sasquatch. That sounds kind of weird, but, you know, uh, so it, it's a, or a Homo Paranthropus or whatever. So we, we call it Homo Paranthropus. So it turns out, well, that, that, that killing those going forward, you know, killing those, it, you know, we, we would consider that a homicide. Okay, so they make that a law. And they make that a law, say, on October 4th, 2020. Well, if they killed them on October 3rd, 2020, they can't go back and charge that person with homicide because the law was not on the books until October. Um, in New York, I know very clearly in New York, it's not illegal to kill anything that is not on the books. It's an unknown animal. Bang. You kill it and it's newly discovered. Guess what? You get a free pass on that because it's not in the books. Uh, unless there are certain areas, such as... Uh, the village of Whitehall or Skamania County, where there are actual laws on the books from you disturbing what is known as a Sasquatch. Yeah, and and there, I, there's several uh, places that have made that distinction right. that it's but, protected. Right, but I would also caution that those laws have been untested as well. And you could always claim, and and you could o always claim um, that. And you did it in self-defense. Right. So, really, and nobody's ever going to call you on the carpet for that. <laughs> um, Pretty much, I mean, all, they can, all, all these laws have done is kind of made it a protected species. It's not going to be like murder or anything like that. Right. So, you, you would probably get uh, the same fine as if you killed, you know, a certain species of woodpecker or... So. Uh, just so you know, Jeff, uh, Chris Noter lives in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and would like to contact you at some point in time. Of course. Man, I'm an open book. Contact me yep. through Facebook. Send yeah, me a Facebook. Open invitation. Come out in southeast Oklahoma near Hutchatown. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been out, I haven't been out in southeast Oklahoma in a while. That's a fun place. That, uh, that's somewhere near Atoka, too, I believe. I love Oklahoma. But, uh, yeah, Oklahoma's fun. It's where Oklahoma's the winds come fun. A lot of good folks, a lot of good researchers in Oklahoma. Oh, uh, and, and another another note from our, our special guest. Yeah, yeah, well, Oklahoma's where the winds come sweeping down the plain. <laughs> uh, yep, okay, then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <he's doing that. laughs> well, uh, Steve, so. you know, since we're on this topic of uh, the, the, the killing Bigfoot discussion, I would like to remind everybody that even if there is not a law on the book specifically saying you cannot be held accountable for murder, you know, charged with murder for killing a Bigfoot, there will be millions of people around the world who will hold your feet to the fire. <laughs> yeah, you probably have to hire a bodyguard because somebody's going to... Definitely. There, there, are, there are people that are on the extremes of every, everywhere. We... Haven't we seen that in, in life re in reality? Yeah. There's extreme yeah. people that have very extreme values and views, and you know you just become a target. Right now, I'm I'm a no kill guy, kind of guy, and I do whatever my conscience can can live with, and I tell everybody else, you know, I, I've had this discussion with people I've went out with, you know, I carry a pistol, they were carrying a pistol, we had this discussion, they asked me what would I do if they saw one. And they shot at it, and I said, well, you know, you do whatever you can live with, okay? I'm not. Mine's going to stay in the holster. But now you do whatever you, whatever you, whatever you can live with. Yeah, exactly. And Ron said, if I find a hard belief of science, all the advances that so-called science has made, we still resort to the same methods that were used 100 years ago, like killing them. That's why I, I'm a firm believer. Let's try the, the technologies. Uh, right. Yeah. Package first and see and see. <laughs> yeah, My that's right. Problem. Peter Peter would go insane, more insane. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. I was. No. Uh, my, my take is to kill something that is possibly the most rare species on Earth just to prove it exists. I will go my entire life without proving it exists before I do that. Now right. I'm a hunter. I get death threats. <clears> you know. Two, three, four times a week by some pita nut or some tree hugging hippie. So, you know, I get death threats. I got her, uh, I challenged, uh, on his muzzle flash 
um, that he claimed in the video that, you know, they shot Patty and all of that. And, and next thing you know, I, I've got like 10 of his cult like followers that are sending me messages, like telling me that, you know, they're going to kill me in my fleet. And of course I gave him my address and said, you know, if you need help finding the house, I'll, I'll meet you in the yard. But, uh, you know, people are nuts. They, they are. And, you know, it's kind of funny. We were talking about somebody asked me on a previous show, you know, have I ever gotten death threats before? And we, we talked last week about that kind of that guy, Jason Boone, who made a, a kind of a sideways threat that you want me to shoot him to Cat Hansen, yeah. uh, debunking yeah. her. Um, uh, a similar thing happened with Bob Garrett uh, when I outed his audio being a recording of a gorilla and how he had taken some folks for some money on an expedition that never went off and they never gave them their money back. And, um, so, uh, <laughs> so Mick had asked yeah. a question. When is the next Squatch Detective bring your own beer meatloaf cookout? <laughs> I don't know. I've never done a meatloaf on the grill before. I actually make meatloaf on the grill. And it's pretty dead gum good. I make that it with sounds vinegar. Like now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, I love Jeff. I love meatloaf. I love it. I've never had a bad meatloaf. Okay, so Dude, I'm thinking on deep smoke. I use mesquite to smoke it on my grill, oh, on man. my pit. Rather, not a grill. Um, and I use a fifty-fifty mix of wild pork and venison on it. And of course, my own secret recipe of spices and stuff that goes in the middle of it. And man, when it's done. You, it'll make your tongue slap a hole in the roof of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, um, I'm Jeff. Uh, this is Alex. Uh, yeah, I, I live over in Dallas. Uh, when, when are you cooking out next? Uh, shut up, Alex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, I just, put, I just put about an 80-pound shoat in the ice chest yesterday evening with my bow, and that bad boy is going on the smoker about Wednesday. I'm going to let it... I like to put them in an ice chest and let them soak in ice water and a brine for about four or five days, pull some of that gaminess out of it, and then put them on that smoker, and, buddy, it's going to be just, woo, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, somebody asked uh, Eric P. from YouTube, hello, Eric, is Stanley Eric. missing in action? I've heard, you know, a lot of people said he just went off the grid. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, maybe it has something to do with, that uh, uh attempted murder yeah, charges yeah, I, I think we maybe, know maybe, why maybe he's laying low there may now well, i don't know there may be some other reasons too um but i'm at, li not at liberty to say exactly just what yet um uh but i don't know if he's mia to tell you the truth uh and taxes road trip <laughs> we'll be down yeah. we'll be down jeff for meatloaf just let us pick know me up mm. i'll pick you up on the way down chris yep yep um Oh, no, no, not, 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 uh, Eric, sorry, not him, but, uh, uh, not him, but one of his, uh, when he, when he made a trip to Alabama and he, uh, he met up with, uh, his Southeast representative, uh, a woman by the name of Gwendolyn Michelle Jones. And, uh, a couple of weeks later, she was arrested for uh, attempted murder. Domestic violence and trespassing. Oh, fuck a moly. So yeah, she took she took three shots at the guy while he was in bed, then took a couple of more shots while he was standing in the hallway. Missed all five times, thank God. Uh, oh. But boy, she's a bad shot. Yeah, I read I read that, and the dude yeah, said he was, a, he, was that. Asleep. Yeah. he was asleep, and he what what he was awakened by gunfire. <laughs> yeah, was like a, and she's missing. He's asleep, and she's missing. So I, I have no clue. Um, uh, other than she sat in jail for about 13 days till she made her $81,000 bond. Uh, <laughs> so, anywho, uh, <laughs> let, let me, uh, aside, and we'll talk about the meatloaf in one second, but one thing I wanted to point out. <laughs> yeah, we're still talking about the meatloaf. Um, <laughs> um one of the things that, that I've made a, a comment on uh, very recently is uh, I have been through, uh, especially in the last three years, I've been through uh, four or five different pitches to networks for a television program. I've been approached by at least a couple of, of, um, of uh, production companies. 
Um, the problem I think they have with me is I'm too skeptical. They want they want somebody else say, "Oh, it's a Bigfoot! Oh, it's a Bigfoot! It's a Bigfoot!" They don't want somebody exposing the truth. One of the shows, and I didn't put this up here, but it also falls in that character. Paranormal caught on tape. That is the biggest bullshit show I've ever seen in my life. Yes, there are some videos I think that are authentic, but I've seen one video that we've kind of debunked here uh, from the, the the little Bigfoot looking around the tree at the, at the father and son and how psychologically it makes no sense. The, the father going to the little son, oh, look, there's a Bigfoot. No, if you're looking at something mysterious like that, you're like, hey, get behind me. Yeah. You're yeah. going to have this protect reaction, right? Not right. this, oh, look, it's a Bigfoot. Um, that's number one. But then several months later, they air a video of a Bigfoot that was the Squatch Master's Bigfoot, saying it was in Ohio. When that video first came out, he said it was in Pennsylvania. And we've seen his videos before, including the, the dead one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but they put it on there like it was like the real thing. So it's very oh, yeah. apparent these people do no research on anything they do. Um, and that was actually uh, a program that we were pitching for, was to do an actual inve on-scene investigation of some of these things. And, uh, oh, no, we, we already have this show. It's called Paranormal Caught on Tape. And it's a piece of garbage. I like, you know, some of the, I know one of the people on there, who, you know, and again, they're just talking heads, you know, well, what, and they're probably asking questions. Well, if that was a Bigfoot, what would you do? And well, you know, and that's how they're answering it. But uh, a lot of the videos they're showing, especially of the cryptid ones, are bullshit. And I don't drop too many words. But that's also the reason why you probably haven't seen me on a TV show. Is because I am too skeptical. I am too analytical. Um, they don't want people to debunk something. That's bad business. They want somebody to make it scary, make it. Oh, ah, ah. They want they want the spook factor. Well, folks, I'm not about that. Anybody that's been in this show has followed this show for the last <clears throat> 14 years. They know I am not about bullshit. I'm about calling it like it is, telling it like it is, and that's why we did part of this show tonight, and that's why we do our shows every week. It's why the whole hashtag stop the lunacy. It's for all this crazy nope. stuff that comes out of everything. And uh, we got a few so, minutes Steve, left. Yep, your ahead. show was the first your show was the first podcast I ever did. Way, way, way back. I don't remember when it was, but it was a long time ago. Uh, and I, I just I remember that uh, that it was the first one I had done, and we had such a great time. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's about having some laughs. You know, not take ourselves too seriously, but we take the topic seriously. And, uh, right. yep. Um, you know, like I said, folks, we, we, we try to keep it real. Um, as things develop, we let you know. Um, you know, I, I, I will tell you how I feel. I will tell you everything. Um, what, I, what I won't tell you is that if something I don't feel is real, I won't say, oh, that's the real thing. Because it's, you know, I won't necessarily, I, I won't bring somebody on the show if I don't believe them, at least on face value. Right. Uh, oh, absolutely, man. Oh, you I saw a big foot has... uh, <laughs> riding a pony into the, okay, thanks. Yep, I'm not going to have you on my show. No, 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 thank you. But if you have a, 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 even, and folks, even if you have a woo type of experience, I'll gladly bring you on the show, too, to discuss your experience, because I think there may be some science behind why there's some woo sometimes. We've talked about that over the last 14 years. And we haven't really done an anniversary show, but uh, the 24th of September, uh, just 10 days ago, marked our 14th anniversary. But we were so busy, me going back to work, it completely is right out of my mind until just a little bit ago. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> um, but it's good, and hopefully we'll be here for another 14 years. Absolutely, man. Um, and uh, that's what it's about. And I want to thank you, Jeff, for coming on tonight, hopping in last minute. Love having you on always. Your you voice know, of reason. I love being home with you guys. So you were a voice of reason. We love having you on. Oh yeah, always, <laughs> always love having Jeff. So. I enjoy being <laughs> always. Steve works. 
<laughs> what, what am I, Eddie Murphy in Coming to America? My son works. <laughs> um, which, by the way, is one of my favorite comedies, is Coming to America. Oh, man, that, that's like a timeless classic. But here's the thing, and people don't understand this, is my father grew up in the Bronx. My mother grew up in the Bronx, too. My father grew up in the Bronx, and he was married, uh, not married, he was, when he was married the first time around, he lived in Beacon, New York, which is just about maybe 40 miles north of New York City. And he lived next to this Hasidic Jewish guy. And he could kick out an accent, the Hasidic Jewish accent, to a T. And this guy was 80. He, 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 they had the, 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 and I'm, we're going to run a little bit over, but that's okay. He would have these garages that would lean in and it's like kind of under the house in the basement. Yeah. Well, one day he was, t he loved telling the story. I remember li listening to this as a little kid. The guy missed his driveway. And next thing you know, he's screaming because his car is like this with the wheels up on the wall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what, what ended up happening is here I am. This five-year-old kid listening to my father imitate this Hasidic Jewish guy. Right. So over the years, and a lot of people haven't heard me do this, on, um, but I've picked up the ability to do that perfectly. Uh oh! <laughs> God damn it! What are you talking about? You should be so lucky, you mushugana. Oh, I'm overclamped. <laughs> so I, I can do that perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's right, you goddamn putts. Ah, they should call this place. They shouldn't call this mighty sharp. They should call this the three putzes. So I, I can do all. Is that velvet? I can do all the. Hey, Kenta Kunta! I can do the whole. I, I, I can do everything in Eddie Murphy in there and, and do the voices. Mm. So I say to the waiter, try the soup. Just taste the goddamn soup. Where's the spoon? Aha! So I, I can do all. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I, it's one of the easiest voices for me to do, and sometimes, uh, and sometimes just it'll come out naturally. Hoy vey, <laughs> <Just Yeah. laughs> uh, but mushugana, <laughs> mushugana, I got them mushugana. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, Chris, yeah, I, I can do Frank Rizzo. Yeah, no, you know, you piss me off one way, I go the other way. I'll throw a shoe so far up your ass. Yeah, uh, <laughs> You know, but me, my tip is always a bit of a problem. I'm always swinging with defenses. You know, I, I can do, you know, and <laughs> and then you know, so you know, oh, it just I love voice work. It, it's fun. Oh. You know, it, it's always fun when I call up the Walmart. Oh yes, hello. I, I was at your service desk about five minutes ago, and I lost my dot. I believe I left it on you. How should you say it? The service desk, and then they'll start looking for it. Hang on, I I, I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. But we have fun. We have we have all kinds of fun, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, my, oh my face is hurting, Steve. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so uh, I'm uh, how what's the matter with you, Ron Bulls? Eh? Oh. So, you know, I I gotta be in the mood to do certain accents and you know, today was Alex Jones Day. Mm. But, but yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I know somebody needs to go nappy land. Yeah, because he's been up for almost a fortnight. Uh, yeah. And uh, but anyway, we want to thank everybody for being on tonight. And uh, Chris, you want to say your thing real quick, and we'll get the hell out of here. Again, I want to thank Jeff for coming on, being a great guest. Uh, thanks to all our listeners. Uh, Every appreciate time he's it. on, I'm got them for Clem. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you're if you're watching us on YouTube uh, or listening to us on YouTube, either way, uh, please hit the thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe. You know, appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Okay, folks. On behalf of everybody here on Squatch DTV, we want to wish everybody a happy and safe week. Keep healthy. Most God bless. And most of all, keep on squatching, folks. We love y'all. You've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com.
Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.